死なないために死ぬほど準備することになってる絵に悲鳴あったことでしょう光栄だけど買いかぶりっすよ Hello guys, it's me Simu Orohara and in this special video, I'll talk about Okitake Joshiro through an untold story. But before diving into the story guys, I need your support this time. I have spent hours writing this script and editing it. So all I want from you is three simple things. If you really appreciate what I'm doing, you will do it with simple clicks. First, watch the video. If you don't want to watch it now, just let the video ongoing and then you can watch it later. Because the more you watch the video longer time, the more you're helping the video to reach more people. Second, give a comment. I need your feedback guys. Either is a critical comment that will improve me in the future or something you like it or something you want to discuss. Third, and this is up to you, if you finished watching the video and you like it, then share it with your friends through Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want. So I'll be really glad if you did this for me guys. And so about the story of Okitake, all the information that are included in this video are from the manga and also some information that was given by Kubo himself. It's just I have used my own style of narration so I can talk about some hidden sides of Ikitaki's life that Kobo didn't focus on them. So let's start guys. Winter has come to the Soul Society. It's the first day of winter, the 21st of December. There is no doubt that it was a normal day for many souls and Shinigami. But it wasn't so with one of the noble families within the Serity. It is true that it was a family of nobles of lower ranks, but it remains a noble family and has its place within the Serity. That family consisted of two spouses, and the beginning of winter came to them of good news. The couple gave birth to their first child, and that firstborn is the hero of our story, Okitake Joshiro. However, the joy of the couple was not complete. Their first son had a long disease, a disease that will change Okitake's life forever. And to start your first steps in life while you are sick with a disease, it is a cruel and painful fate, and it hurts more for the parents of that child. In the story of Bleach, I don't think Kobo told us the story of one of the characters so that we see the role of their parents as they sacrifice for their children. And I think the only prominent examples are Masaki's sacrifice in order to save her son Ichigo and the same with Anao's mother. Other than that, all the characters had a past without parents or just one of the parents. But Okitake's parents had a big role in saving his life. When Okitake was born, his parents started to notice signs of illness on him. And with every bout of illness little Okitake was going through, they would rush him to the doctor, who assured them that their son suffers from a chronic lung disease. That's why Okitake's parents were suffering from a difficult psychological condition. The days are starting to come, and the months are running out, and Okitake's health condition is getting worse and worse. This disease didn't work with it, a medicine or a doctor. That's why Okitake's parents started to look in for another solution in order to save their only son. Okitake mentioned that his parents were very superstitious, but I think that's not the case. Because Okitake's parents tried all possible methods, solutions, they took him to the doctor and it didn't work. Therefore, they were left with one only solution, which is to resort to extraordinary and supernatural things that are capable of healing him. So one of them began searching, whether in the Serity library or outside in the Rekongai areas, for anything that might treat their son. It may be that Okitake's father spent days looking for solution that enables him to treat his son until he found information in a book or that he found someone who told him about the existence of a shrine in one of the Rekongai areas, Area 76. That shrine is called the Mimihagi Shrine. It is said that it is one of the gods worshipped in that region. So it provides divine protection for those who sacrifice their own child organs except the eyes for him. In any return, Mimihagi gives them the protection they need. Okitake's parents may have felt sense of horror at first. It is a big gamble 
to sacrifice their son to this creature. But which one is worse? Okutaki's death or Mimihagi's acquisition? This difficult choice became imposed on Okutaki's parents on a rainy night. When Okutaki reached the age of three, one night, his health got worse. And this time it was hard in his weak body. The stormy weather of that rainy night was a strong warning to Okitake's parents that this malaise that afflicted him was not the same as the previous ones. It has been now two nights and he is in this condition. In fact, the degree of seriousness of the ill health that afflicted him made his hair turn white. And in front of these painful facts, the parents had no choice. The solution of earth has been implemented. It remains only to seek help from the heaven. We must take him to Mimihagi. It is the only solution left that may save our dear son. And that's what happened. The parents took their sick son and went on that rainy night to Mimihagi's shrine. Kobo showed us a page where little Okitake was shown in a very bad situation, as well as the words of his parents saying, Please Mimihagi, save this child. These words were the parents' prayer for Mimihagi, while the little body of Okitake was the sacrifice. Mimihagi, that hand who had fallen from heaven, it only had one eye. It opened that eye and looked at the little boy with a look of mercy, and accepted to acquire his organs in exchange for saving his life. Yes, it was supposed that Okitake was going to die that night, at the age of three years old, but Mimihagi stopped that horrible fate. Therefore, Okitake was not completely cured of the disease, but only its fatal effects were reduced. The important for Okitake's parents is that their son's life was saved, better than dying in front of them. And so Okitake survived that night, but his life is no longer the same. That little child, now his small body, contains the Soul King's right hand. I don't know if Okitake's parents knew that Mimihagi was the right hand of the Soul King, or if all they knew was that he was a god worshipped in the Rikongai, but that doesn't matter to them anymore. The most important thing is that Okitake is alive. Although the kid Okitake was suffering from that deadly illness, and he was going through hard days and he was about to die, all these things didn't make him someone who cursed life or fate for making him like this. No. Okitake had a nice personality from a young age. He never complained about his health. He was not a naughty child, but was obedient to his parents and was helping them despite bouts of illness that afflicted him from time to time. He even helps his younger siblings. After his birth, his parents had six other children, four boys and two girls. And as we said, Okitake was the older brother, and the older brother is considered to be the second father of the family. So Okitake's generous personality and the warm feature of his face made him popular with everyone, with his parents, with his siblings, and even with his relatives and the rest of his friends. Okitake grew old and became a young man, but one of the important questions remained in his mind. Although he was young, but he did not forget that night in which he almost died. His memories was blurred due to illness and because he was young. But he knew for sure the way he was survived from that illness was not an ordinary thing. That's why the question, how did I survive, stuck in Okitake's mind. In fact, we don't know exactly at what stage Okitake learned that Mimihage was inside him and that it was the reason for his survival. It may have been one of his parents who told him this fact and on that basis Okitake decided to become a Shinigami in the first place. Meaning, when Okitake knew that the Soul King's right hand was the one who saved him from death and that the Soul King was the ruler of the Shinigami, as a result, Okitake decided to become a Shinigami. And this may be the logical motive that made Okitake, despite his precarious health condition, decided to become a Shinigami. In other words, Okitake may be one of the few characters who knew one of the biggest secrets of the story about the Soul King at a young age. And another thing that we also don't know is when Okitake got to know both Kyoraku and Yamamoto. We know that Kyoraku had a close relationship with Yamamoto before Kyoraku became a Shinigami. That short flashback of Yamamoto, it shows how the 
child Kyoraku used to come to Yamamoto's private room. But with Okitaki it was different, especially if we know that Kyoraku's family is considered one of the most highest noble family, while Okitaki's family is the opposite, the lowest in ranks. So we don't know if Okitaki knew Kyoraku before he became a Shinigami or after. The most important thing is that Okitaki at some point in his life will have many relationships. Kyoraku will become his best friend, he will also become one of Yamamoto's favorite students and he had also a good relationship with everyone. Okitaki is a character that no one can dislike to the point that Okitaki had a very good relationship with Tokinada, one of the most psychopaths in Bleach. But back to Kyoraku, there is a strange, wonderful link between him and Okitaki. Both of them had a big secret that they were hiding it somewhere and at a young age. As we said, Okitaki has been carrying Mimihagi inside his body since the age of 3, but despite that he didn't know that he was carrying Mimihagi until a certain time in his life. There he knew about Mimihagi and according to my assumption, that was before he joined the academy. As for Kyoraku, he was dealing with a big problem because of his older brother's wife, who entrusted him with her family's sacred sword and she asked him to hide it somewhere far away. Thus, Okitake was hiding one of the parts of the Soul King, who is considered to be a god in Bleach, while Kyuraku was hiding a sacred sword inside one of his swords whose ability basically works against the gods of Bleach. And speaking about the swords of Kyuraku, we know that Okyu, the second sword of Kyuraku, was created because of Kyuraku's desire to hide Hakyuken. So Ohana, the first sword, gave birth to Okyu, meaning that if Kyuraku hadn't been forced to find a way to hide Hakyuken, he wouldn't have a second sword. The same thing will happen to Okitaki. If it wasn't for Mimihagi inside Okitaki's body, he wouldn't have been able to form two swords in the Shikai mode. And so, this was undoubtedly one of the most important stages of Okitaki's life. When he got a Sauchi and wanted to reflect the essence of his soul within it, there is no doubt that some of the influences of Mimihagi began to appear to him. So it could be that Okitaki knew about Mimihagi when he wanted to get a Zanpakuto the first time. Or as I said, he already knew about Mimihagi before he entered the academy. For that, Yamamoto said that Okitaki and Kyoraku are the only ones in the history of the Soul Society who have a Zanpakuto consisted of two blades. And Okitaki's distinction was not only in Shikai. Okitaki, despite his health conditions, was superior in all skills beside Kyuraku. And this is what made them to be among the first captains to graduate from the school that Yamamoto founded. It seems that if we exclude the founders like Yamamoto, Onohana, Yachiro and the others we don't know, Kyoraku and Okitaki are considered the first captains of the second generation who came after the founders. On the other hand, if we return to Okitaki, the captain, there is no doubt that his past and what he went through are all things that made him have a different perspective and belief from the rest of the captains in the Shinigami. For example, Aizen Sosuke was a captain in the Gutei 13, with beliefs against everything that has to do with the Soul King. Zaraki entered the Gutei 13 in order to fight. But Okitaki, and since that rainy night, his life has become linked to the Soul King, to protect the Soul King. So Okitaki knew for sure that one day he would have to repay the debt to the Soul King. Therefore, during his career as a captain, Okitaki stood against anyone who tried to pose any threat to Ryu's existence, I mean Soul King. For example, accompanied by Kyuraku, he stood against the 8th Kenpachi as a Soya, who was trying to destabilize the system by trying to recruit a number of souls to eliminate the Hollows. But the most important challenge for Okitake was represented by two characters, and they are Aizen Sosuke and Yuobach. And let's start with Aizen Sosuke. Aizen Sosuke is considered to be one of the few characters who knew the truth of Okitake and that he has Mimihagi inside him. We don't know exactly when and how, but there is no doubt that during Aizen Sosuke's search for Okin and all the available information about the Soul King and how he has missing parts 
and maybe some of these parts are found in the Soul Society, somehow he knew that Okitake had the right hand of the Soul King, and Kobo confirmed this information twice, either in Can't Fear Your Own World novel or his answer in Club Outside. And this opens another question. Who are the characters that knew the truth of Okitake? What we have for sure is Aizen Sosuke, as well as Kyoraku, and maybe even... Uh, the Soul Taichu Yamamoto. And on the other hand, it is certain that this short scene between Okitake and Aizen tangibly revealed their contradictory views. Aizen wants to remove that things that are found in heaven, while Okitake wants to protect it. And so after Aizen Sosuke revealed his intentions and what he wants to do, I think Okitake was starting to sense that he might have to wake up Mimihag in order to defend the Soul King in case Aizen Sosuke succeeded in penetrating the royal palace. But this seemed a weak possibility since the Gote at that time was ready for war against Aizen Sosuke compared to their war against Yuwaba. It is true that the ones who defeated Aizen Sosuke in the end was Ichigo and Kisuke. But the most important thing is that Aizen could not enter the royal palace and therefore Okitake didn't have to reveal his hidden card. And this may explain to you why Okitake's interventions in fights weren't that much. The only sense in which Okitake used his Shikai was in Kyoraku's fight against Stark. But Okitake's role has always been related to the Soul King. He is the one who discovered Aizen Sosuke's scheme and the Oaken case through his research in the Great Library. And because the topic of Ryo in the previous arcs was not mentioned much, Okitake also didn't have much screen time. But by the beginning of the second half of the final arc, everything had changed 180 degrees. The Quincy first attack was devastating. Yamamoto, the master of Okitake and the leader of the Gotei 13 has been killed. This incident alone was enough to show how bad the situation has reached in the Soul Society. And here, Kyoraku and Okitake will carry the legacy left to them by their master Yamamoto. One of them will take the leadership of the Gotei 13 and the other will took the path of sacrifice for the sake of the Soul King and the Shinigami. And there is no doubt that after the end of the first invasion, Okitake started to see that the Soul King was in a real danger. Yu Habak had all the capabilities that would allow him to break into the royal palace and take down the Soul King. And so Okitake started to think that his time has come. His time has come to repay the debt to the Soul King. And just before the start of the second invasion, Okitake went to the Mimihagi shrine, which his parents had taken to him when he was 3 years old. And there is no doubt that when Okitake stood in front of that shrine, he had many feelings. He remembered that rainy day, and how windy it was, and how he was suffering from illness. He remembered the screams of his parents as they called on Mimihagi to save their son. That day was a sunny day. Okitake was fine, better than before. And this is what his parents wanted, is that their eldest son to be fine. But now, what Okitake cares about is not fine, the Serich is not fine. Instead of hearing his parents scream, now he listening to the screams of his followers, Sintaro and Kyuni, about the Serich being invaded again. There is no doubt that Okitake closed his eyes for a while and reviewed his long life path that spanned centuries before deciding to enter the Kamikaki ritual, which means the end of his life. Here I have to ask a very important question. Did Okitake know that with his death he would go to hell? Of course, he was aware of the Konsoresai ritual and that when a captain dies after 12 years, the other captains and vice captains must do this ritual to the death captain. Because the Ryatsu when it becomes Rishi, it can only be returned to the Soul Society by this ritual. Of course, this is the concept that was studied in the Academy. So did Okitake only know this concept or did he know the tale that speaks about hell? And the fact that when he will die, he will be sent to hell? For me, I doubt that he knew only the general definition. Because it was his friend Kyuraku who told us the tale that speaks about the captions who are casted 
to hell after their death. That's why I do think Okitake was well aware of this issue, that his sacrifice will end up him being going to hell. The important thing is that when Okitake performed the Kamikake ritual, he had all these considerations in mind. And what Okitake was expecting happened, Yu Habach invaded the royal palace. So the fate of the world was in danger. The fate of the soul king is in danger. And so the second invasion began in chapter 547 and Okitake missed all the battles that followed until the beginning of the fight between Ichibi and Yuhabach. There when he will meet his best friend Kyuraku. It was a short meeting, but it was an impressive and important meeting. From the conversation that took place between them, Kyuraku, it was clear that he knew about Mimihagi and even about the ritual called Kamikake. The thing that affects me every time I read this conversation between them and I see this page are the features of both Kyuraku and Okitake. Okitake knew that his fate would often end with his death and yet his soft features didn't change. As for Kyuraku, when Okitake told him that Kamikake was waiting for this, he showed these features looks of sadness as if he knew that the success of the Kamikake ritual means that Okitake is preparing to sacrifice himself in case the Soul King dies. Because Kyuraku was aware of this possibility that the Soul King could be killed in this war. That's why he went to Ichigo's friends and he gave them those soul tickets to prepare them for the possibility that Ichigo will be the successor of Ryu if this latter was killed. So Kyuraku knew for sure that Okitake would inevitably die if the Soul King was killed. And this meeting was a farewell meeting between Kyuraku and Okitake. Then Kyuraku went to get Aizen out of the Moken to confront Yuhabach, while Okitake went to Kiski's whereabouts with the rest. Orohara Kiski's plan was to break into the royal palace by making a gate that transports all the captions and the vice captions at once, using everyone's riyatsu. But everything changed. The defeat of Ichibi in front of Yuabach and the unintentional kill of Ryo by Ichigo, it made everything collapse. The disaster has happened. Everyone felt the horror of what had happened. Immediately after the death of the Soul King, the balance of the world soon began to collapse. And this is what Orohara Kiski noticed. He is the one who broke this shocking news to those with him when he matched the Soul King has died. Orohara Kiski, who is considered to be the smartest character in Bleach, has fallen helpless in front of this shocking truth. His worst nightmare has occurred, and he is the one who sealed eyes on Sosuke just to avoid the occurrence of such scenario. And now Yu Habach has shaken the throne of heaven and killed the Soul King. However, when everyone was shocked by the horror of what had happened, one man from among all came forward. And he is the hero of our story, to declare that he is the one who will save the worlds. I imagine what feelings Okitaki had in those moments. Is it feelings of gratitude? that he will finally be able to pay his debt to the Soul King? Or is it feelings of sorrow that he will bid farewell to his loved ones and followers? No doubt that they were together. Mixed feelings. Feelings that can be titled as sacrifice and self-denial. And so Okitake did the Kamikake by making the Mimihage possess all of his body parts so that his body would literally represent the right hand of the Soul King. Okitake's sacrifice undoubtedly was great but unfortunately its effects were not as the same size yes it was able to stop the imbalance for a moment before Yuhabach absorbs Ryo and Mimihag and the sense of stopping the imbalance of the worlds it could also have been done by absorbing Yuhabach to Ryo we might say that Okitaki unfortunately only increased Yuhabach's strength by making him absorb Mimihage as well. After Yuhabach had absorbed Mimihage, Okitaki died. Because as we said, Mimihage was the one who was protecting him. And after the sacrifice, there was no talk of Okitaki's death until chapter 685. There when we saw that touching scene of Kyoraku next to the tombstone of Okitaki. It seems for 10 years Kyoraku has been frequenting the tombstone of Okitake to visit it. And this is normal. 
Okitake wasn't a normal person for Kyoraku. He was his best friend. They have spent centuries together with each other. Okitake and Kyoraku were inseparable. You can't find scene of Kyoraku without Okitake and the same for Okitake. Of course, this scene took place after 10 years, which means only 2 years remains until the Konsoreisai ritual took place. Meaning that Ryatsu of Okitake was still wandering in the Soul Society. Did Kyoraku didn't want to believe what was said in that tale? Did he didn't want to believe in the issue that Konsul Reisai might send Okitake to hell? I don't know frankly what was going on in his head, but what was mentioned in that story was true. We saw how Shikai Okitake came out of the hell gate in order to bring Zailo Apuru back to there. What I personally think is that Okitake has transformed from a guardian of the Soul Society within the Soul Society to a guardian of the Soul Society from the world of hell in a strange and crazy cycle like Okitake's life from a child who was about to die to a custodian of one of the parts of the Soul King then a captain within the Gote then a saver of the woods then a guardian of hell and so I think. So guys, this is the end of my video. I hope you like it and see you guys in my next video with another story of a caption.